All right, guys. So I'm trying something new here. I'm trying to set this thing up, but I don't even know where to look because I'm filming this on my phone. And I have decided that I wanted to do a get ready with me. Here I am at my house. God, it's so hard not to not look at yourself. So, um, anywho. Wow, I'm really impressed with these, like, iPhone cameras. It looks really good. Anyway, um, I'm here in my beauty room. And I just thought, you know, let me have a little chit-chat with my peeps. Um, I'm just going to get ready today and use my normal products that I use on the daily or I just have right in front of me. I'm in my personal space here in front of my vanity. And, you know, this is like a great place for me just to talk about where I've been, what I've been doing, what I am doing, what I'm planning on doing, you know. <sighs> but yeah, how have you guys been doing? I know I've been away from, um, from YouTube for like so long. It's like not even funny. And should I talk about what I'm using? I'm just, I feel like I'm just gonna get ready because I had to go to work. I'm on my way to work. I'm not filming any makeup tutorials today, so I'm just gonna do like a really simple whatever. Like, I honestly feel like if I could, roll up to work in some sweatpants because that's what I feel like. But anywho, I'm using my little um, deluxe size sample of this Le Mer, the treatment lotion. It's actually pretty good. Kate, I see you. Kate, our beauty stylist at work, she gave me one of the samples and it's cute. But is it $120 cute is the question. But um, yeah, it's very hydrating. Um, so you guys are gonna get to see me do my little skincare makeup routine before I go to work. Oh, I just put on um, the Nuco. It's called the Pill All-in-One Serum. I got it off of BoxyCharm. Do you guys do BoxyCharm? I love BoxyCharm. BoxyCharm is like, I think the only or one of very few subscription beauty boxes that actually give you full size products. And it's so fun because, you know, I don't really expect them. And then they just show up to my door and I'm like, oh my God, it's like a little gift. It's really cute. Okay, so my lips have been so dry the past month. That's too much. So I'm using Ilia, their lip mask. Ilia is actually one of the brands that I carry at work. But they took it away from my counter. It really sucks because it's a good brand. So yeah, where have I been? I have been... Gosh, when was the last time I filmed a YouTube video? It had to be three years ago. Can you believe three years passed? Wow. It's too much. It's much too much. Anyway, let me put my um, sunscreen on. Guys, this is like one of the best sunscreens and it's only $9.99 from Target. It is the Black Girl Sunscreen for Kids. It has an SPF 50 and it's water resistant. It does not leave a white residue, which is amazing. And for people that have dry skin like myself, it is amazing. Like it has all these different hydrators and oils in it like it has let me just read a couple it has carrot oil shea butter sun sunflower seed oil avocado oil jojoba oil it is so moisturizing so if you're like super dry like myself i actually use this as a two-in-one so it's my moisturizer too like you do not need a moisturizer moisturizer underneath this it is super hydrating. I tend to buy cheap sunscreens because I go through them so quickly. And if you didn't know, I'm a sunscreen fiend. Um, I go through sunscreens so quickly. And yes, it looks like a lot of sunscreen that I'm putting on. And yes, I'm putting it on my eyelids, under my eyes, down my neck, onto my chest, behind my neck, on my ears. A lot of people don't put sunscreen, like enough sunscreen on. First of all, a lot of people don't put sunscreen, period. And then secondly, people that do wear sunscreen, like that viral Gwyneth Paltrow um, video that went around where she was like talking about putting sunscreen on and she how she put it on like a highlighter. Like she just like put it on her high points of her face. And uh, no, that's not how you put sunscreen on. You have to literally put like 
I think it's a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of sunscreen all over your face. And that teaspoon should go down your neck, onto your chest, like everywhere. But yeah, and if you didn't know, you should um, watch my girl, Dr. Dre. She's a board certified dermatologist. Um, I've been following her for a couple years now and she is probably the go-to dermatologist that I go to for questions on YouTube. But she just keeps it real. All right, so I just kind of let that sit a little bit because it is a little oily, but in a good way. Like it's like hydrating, but look at that. My skin's so glowy. Can we talk about this camera? This camera is like serving right now. Okay. You don't want to go too quickly into your makeup right after your, your skincare because then your makeup will slide around. But I think today I'm going to do a powder foundation. And I'm not using a primer either. I'm just going to put it on just like this. So what I do first, I'm just going to use, you know what, I'm going to keep it a MAC day. I'm using this MAC um, Prep and Prime highlighter in Bright Forecast. And it's not really a concealer, it's a highlighter. It has peachy tone, so it helps um, alleviate any dark circles under the eyes. But I do this first, first and foremost. And I kind of put a generous amount under my eyes because honestly, when you blend it, it's very thin. It's like a very thin formula and it blends like very sheer. So it doesn't really have that much coverage. It's more for the brightening. Because I mean, I have some darkness under my eyes, but I, I don't have like the darkest under eye circles, you know what I mean? But yeah, I think it's just, it's just very brightening and natural looking. But girl, okay, let's talk about it. So I've been off of YouTube and let me tell you, those first few videos on YouTube were like a full, full-time job. People, a lot of people don't realize, and some of you do that follow other influencers and stuff, but, oh, and don't mind the mess in the bag. We just washed the sheets. We're having guests coming over in a couple weeks and we just washed the sheets and threw them in, on the bed behind me. But, um, what was I gonna say? But girl, like making YouTube videos, especially for like high production, it is no joke. It was a full-time job. And at the same time, it was like learning, right? You know? I'm like learning how to edit, learning different software, like doing the most. And um, it got overwhelming and it was just too much. And then the fact that I was putting that much work in and I'm, I'm not getting paid for it, like, girl, let me just do something else. So that was that. I really love doing it though, it was fun. It was just a lot of work and not getting, you know, not benefiting from it monetarily. I understand it takes a long time. It takes time, patience, and hard work to like be successful at YouTube. So, you know, now I have the time to do it because um, I get a job at Nordstrom's and Nordstrom, I found out that we can, that they, I mean, at Nordstrom, they like push social media on us. Like, uh, why aren't you on your Instagram? Why aren't you on this and that? Promoting products, promoting your business. So I was like, hell, like, this is an opportunity for me to get paid while really growing my social media. And I'm like, I, I took it, I took it by the balls and I'm running with it, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I am just trying to um, do that right now. And that's why you see me, like, on my other channel, um, that Nordy Chick V doing tutorials and all that stuff because, I mean, let's just keep it real too. The retail world has changed. It is not, I almost want to sit down and be like, listen, <laughs> but I have to keep doing my makeup. Um, hold on, before I go on that tangent, let me grab my foundation. And this is my tried and true. And all y'all know about this powder, but it is the MAC Studio Fix. I mean, honestly, there is no foundation powder better than the MAC Studio Fix. Honest, I've tried them all, literally. I've literally tried them all. But you know what, before I do this, I'd like to set my sunscreen and that uh, highlighter that I put on before I put on a powder foundation just because it um, it's too tacky. Like my skin's too wet. And if I put like a full coverage from, um, powder on top, it will stick and be uneven on my face. So I like to set my sunscreen and um, 
the concealer first before I do that. And that's a trick too, like if you don't like wearing makeup, but, and you just wear sunscreen, but you want to look matte, just throw some loose powder on top. But see, it looks really natural, honestly. I could just go out like this and call it a day. But because I am at work, I have to glam it up a little bit. But not too much because it's Monday, okay? Look at that. Look at that coverage. See, this is why I love Studio Fix powder. Um, what's he saying? Oh, yeah. So, <sighs> I haven't worked in a department store in almost five years when I lived in New York for Century 21, which is like this downtown department discount store. Imagine like a, a five floor. Was it five or six floor? I forgot how many floors it was. But it was a huge like TJ Maxx, pretty much. But it was better than TJ Maxx. They had like designer couture stuff. It was awesome, but they closed down. Thanks pandemic, it's horrible, but they closed down and they were literally across the street from um, the World Trade Centers. But anywho, I mean, I saw a decline in the um, retail world. I mean, when I say the retail world, I mean like customers, people shopping, going in store, doing stuff like that. And I was in the middle of New York City, like in the epicenter, uh, the epicenter of like literally across the street from the World Trade Center. And you would think there were like thousands of tourists coming in, which there were. There were thousands of tourists coming in. And keep in mind, this is pre, pre pandemic. And they weren't really shopping back then. And I was like, what is going on? Like the retail atmosphere is changing. I think the whole industry was like confused, like what is going on? Like, like the, the industry itself didn't know what to do. But I mean, honestly, I think it was like an effect of, you know, like Amazon, people just were lazy and don't want to go out and go shopping um, like they used to. But, you know, it was only enhanced when the pandemic happened. And now, you know, coming back into that department store world, it is completely different. Like there is like no one walking into store. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Like if you're, if you work in sales in a department store out there, kudos. Cause I feel you. I know what it means. I know what it feels like. And the pressure is real because these companies are like comparing themselves to years ago before the pandemic and the numbers just aren't the same it's like impossible and then the explosion of amazon and online retailers and things of that nature um have just gone up and then now the pandemic has created like stock and shipping issues and the stores aren't empty and it's just a, it's just a lot trust me like this is a dis an ongoing discussion that happens um at work all the time and how there are issues across the board in the retail world. So, I mean, as you guys know, I I, I went to school for um, UX UI design. And that was like one big reason why I decided to go into that world. Because I know that the world we live in is going to move into the tech space. Eventually, it might not happen next year or 10 years or even 20 years. But our kids, our grandkids, our future it's going to be online somehow some way i mean everything's going to move into that and then now with the pandemic i felt like that just pushed it faster and made it move faster um for that to happen so you have to be creative if you work in the retail space you have to be you have to be one creative and two tech savvy if you're not tech savvy Good luck to you. And I really feel bad for, um, you know, the older generation that wasn't raised with technology that work at Nordstrom because they're so old school with how they sell. Um, I mean, there are people that still like write down on notebooks. Like who writes on notebooks, right? <laughs> I mean, it's sad, but it's true. That's like so old school. That's how I learned like sales. When I first worked in luxury sales, when I was 20 years old in Seattle and I worked for Ballet of Switzerland and we had literal binders and books where we had to write people's information down, you know? 
And that isn't like that anymore. Everything's like QR codes, like emails, like all of that stuff. And if you are not akin to that, good luck. Good luck. They better be using the, you know, the only big advantage, like, I feel like the more, like the older sales, um, salespeople have it are the fact that they have a strong book because they've been doing it for so long. But then the thing is, like the reverse of that is that their customers are older too. And they don't know how to do certain things. And then like certain systems and um, certain, uh, whatchamacallit, like methods of getting like the customer to the product and the product to the customer and then the product, you know, it's just, it's all digital now. And I feel really bad because that's the future. That's really where it's at. So honestly, that's one big reason why I started a Nordstrom YouTube channel because I can do so much by throwing out a little like Facebook message to you guys and saying, hey, check out this shampoo. Like I want you to see why I like something. And FYI, everything that I post, everything that I use in a tutorial are real products that I really use. Like I'm not gonna bullshit you. Like I'm not gonna show you a product because it's expensive and I get bigger commission off of it. Like I'm gonna show you like a product that I like, that I've been using, that I love, and that I feel like people out there could benefit from that. And if I can make a commission off of it, thank you. I mean, that's that's the tea. That's the real tea is that I am using the technology that Nordstrom is giving me and utilizing that into a, a business model where I don't rely on people walking up to my counter because if I videotaped the traffic that comes to my counter, it is like cricket, cricket. Like, no, it won't happen. It won't happen. You think people come in from, you know, to Las Vegas, they want to go shopping. No, honey. They come here to gamble and to eat. Let's just keep it real. And if they are winning some big money, they are going to go to the win and drop the coins at Chanel or like crystal shops at Gucci, they ain't coming to Nordstrom's. So let's talk, that's the real talk. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's just fun that I'm able to do these videos and you know, after watching this, if you didn't know, now you know, I have a YouTube channel for my job at Nordstrom's, like kind of showcasing products that I love, products that I use and creating tutorials on how to use them. And I think that would, be a really great way for me to kind of reach the masses in a sense instead of talking to like one person at a time and telling them oh this is how you do this this is how you do that this is a place where I could actually tell my customers hey check out this video on how to do a smoky eye or oh check out this video on how I do my eyebrows because I get that a lot like oh how did you do your eyebrows how did you do your foundation I love your skin what do you use you know so this is just like a fast track way of getting clients, strangers, friends of mine to check out what I actually use and what is readily available at Nordstrom. And also a lot of people don't realize that there are events, sales, the anniversary sales about to come out um, in a couple, like a month or so and triple points, like stuff, stuff like that. I just want it to be kind of like a digital video newsletter to like everybody that I know. So, you know, that's pretty much it. With that, oh my god, what time is that? But I have to pick it up because I wanted to stop by this little Japanese restaurant that's just opened up down the street. And they have, what are those things called? They're not called nigiri. They're like, they're like the little triangles, the Japanese like rice balls. And then they have like seaweed and then filling inside. They have those. And I love those. Those things are like my favorite things. And they're so cheap. They're like $1.50 or $1.75 or something. And I'm like, I'll take five. <laughs> so I'm going to bring those to lunch today. But, um, hmm, okay. Have I been telling you what I've been using? Do you care? I, I feel like this channel is more for, you know, having a kiki, talking about myself, talking about, like, what's going on. And y'all, some of y'all are asking, like, well, what happens to the UX stuff? I'm like, girl, 
I'm still trying. I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of like putting in, in God's hands <laughs> right now just because with work at Nordstrom, these videos, I even do Poshmark still, and my fitness, that's another whole nother video we can talk about. It is just a lot, but, um, but we'll talk about it. Girl, it's about to get hot up in Las Vegas. I mean, our winter was pretty, um, our winter was pretty long and I, and I love that. Our winters here are so nice. It's like perfect weather. Like it gets cold, but not like New York City cold where you're like literally dying and freezing to death and you have to dress up like an Eskimo. Like it's not that cold. It's cold. What I like about the the winters here is that it's like cold enough to like wear cute clothes. <laughs> like you can wear like cute coats, cute jackets, gloves if you want. But then also at the same time, Vegas isn't really a walking city. It's definitely a um like a driving city. So you really can't show off your look like in New York. And that's what I loved about New York is that. You can uh, show off your look. That's what it's about. But um, you're here, you're everyone's hiding behind cars. And then you want what, go to the casinos? Like no one that lives here literally goes to the casinos. Like what's the point of going to the casinos if you live here? <laughs> I go there for the buffets and for like shows maybe, but I don't even do those really. I'll go there for like a, maybe like a certain store, but I'll just go in, go to the store and leave. Like I don't hang out at the casino. I feel like I don't know anything about the strip and I feel bad for people that like, I have friends that come from out of town and they're like, oh, what do we do on the strip? And I'm like, girl, I don't know. Cause I literally don't go anywhere on the strip. I work on the strip too. I mean, Fashion Show Mall is like right there on the strip. But I literally go to work, get in my car, and leave. <laughs> Everyone's trying to, like, when, you, when I'm driving down um, the 15, like, l like everybody, thousands of people are driving in from California and trying to come in. And here I am, like, trying to get my ass out. I'm like, girl, this strip is too much. I can't handle it. It's like Times Square times 10. It's like a big Times Square with, like, slot machines, you know? Hmm. Okay. I think this is good enough. I'm not trying to be like perfect either. I just gotta hurry it up. Ugh. All right, what's next? Blush. What else? Yeah, the uh, the UX, I, I, I thought it was really fun. I totally could have seen myself doing it. Girl, they are not trying to let me into this, into the industry, like, Tech companies, I've had like at least 10 interviews and the interviews were all great. I made it to three, even four, inter the fourth interview and it always, every single time, it ends the same way. We ended up going with somebody with more experience. <laughs> like, we're all done. It's like, I don't know what to say to that, you know? I mean, I talked to other designers and they're all like, you need to like add more projects to show that you're serious. You need to like do, you know, more case studies in your portfolio. And I'm like, I do not have time to do that with a full-time job. I mean, it's intense. Like to do a whole case study, you have to do surveys, you have to get data, you have to analyze it, you have to create all these deliverables. It's a lot. So I'm like... Girl, I'll get there when I get there. But right now, what's paying the bills is Nordstrom. So I'm trying to make the most out of the situation. And we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, and what's next? This is, we're just doing like a quick eyeshadow, girl. It is like not that serious today. It is Monday. Mondays are my like, in my mind, they're like my sweatpant day. I'm like, I can't deal with it right, too, right now. And you, and some of you are probably like, this is your Monday? <laughs> like, you're doing a full face of makeup. And I'm like, uh, yeah. But I also work in cosmetics, in retail, at Nordstrom's, in a luxury store. We gotta look pulled together. We can't be looking like we just rolled out of bed. You know? We still have to look the part. Would you go to somebody that looked a hot mess working at the counter at Nordstrom? I wouldn't. I'd be like, ooh. I'll see the person behind you, you know? 
Like, I am not trying to look unkempt, girl. <laughs> not that word, unkempt. All right, see how fast that was? Yeah, see, these are the kind of colors I go for. This is the Ella Masca palette, by the way. Unveiled Artistry Palette. I got it from BoxyCharm. Say hey, BoxyCharm. I'm telling you, BoxyCharm's fierce. I mean, at the end of the day, though, they, they do send me a lot of the same stuff. So I have, like, like 30 eyeshadow palettes that all kind of look the same. Or I have, like, 10 cleansers that I, that I need to get through, and I'll never get through it. So I just give it away to friends. Because I also get free stuff from work. So I just get free stuff everywhere. So anytime I have friends come visit, I'm just like, here, get whatever you want. You can have it. Okay. Mascara. Mascara, and that's it. And then I blow dry my hair. I'm not even putting liner on, girl. It is just keeping it cute. Keeping it cute. And when I do looks like this, I like to just do like a blush focus. You know, just want to look fresh. But yeah, we got a new dog. God, so much has happened since I last talked to you guys on YouTube. I mean, my dad passed away, which was horrible. My mom moved in with me. I'm a caretaker for my mom now. Um... We got three dogs. Just recently just adopted a husky named Elsa, which she's super sweet. Um, we moved to a house and oh my God, it's so nice to move into a house. I haven't moved in a house in like, since in my twenties. I've always been in an apartment. Literally, it was like the best thing when I moved into a house. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh, is this what it feels like? It feels kind of amazing. Okay, lashes. As you guys know, I'm like gagging over my lashes just because I never had lashes this long. I'm, I'm telling you, I used New Lash, which is like a lash serum. And I put it on every night before I go to bed and they look cute. So I just got this mascara from work. They had sale 25% off of all mascaras at Lancome. See, it's stuff like that. I want to like reach out to you guys and like, just so you know... All Lancome mascaras are 25% off. So I wanted to try this because this is like a mascara I've never tried. This is the Hypnos Dull Lush. I like the brush. It's like thin at the top and then it's like a little teardrop. Like I'm someone who can't use big, big brushes because I have small Asian chinky eyes. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, mascara. So nice to have the option not to wear false lashes because before I I kind of had to. I felt like there was nothing on my eyes if I just wore mascara. My lashes were so short. I mean, I'll tell you that new lash, it fucking works, but it's expensive. It's like a hundred dollars or two. It's like Latisse. Remember Latisse, except it doesn't have all the weird side effects that Latisse has. Now, because I have like longer lashes, I'm like obsessed with mascaras. I like want to try all of them. It's kind of like when you lose weight, you suddenly you're into things that you never, like, thought you would wear. Like, oh my god, I lost 100 pounds. I want to buy, like, 10 string bikinis. <laughs> yeah, right. I would never. Can you imagine? Absolutely not. I mean, are string bikinis still in? I feel like um, when girls put on mascara, they don't rotate the brush. So, like, as I'm doing it, I move it like that. So I get all angles of the brush. Because there's product all around that brush. Every time I see like a customer come in, they just do this kind of motion and then they wonder why their mascara dries out. I'm like, girl, what are some good mascaras out there that you guys like? Comment down below, I wanna know. Cause I feel like I've tried them all. Should I do the bottom lash? I don't know. <sighs> Kevin Aquan, Kevin Aquans. In my first video, I talked about this mascara and how much life it gives. It's like, it's so good for the bottom lashes because that doesn't smudge. It creates those tubes around each lash. So it doesn't smudge. And then when you're ready to wash it off, they're like activated by like cleanser and they literally like discharge and come off in like tubes. Ugh, I'm going to work on Monday. I hate coming to work on Monday. It is so dead. Like if it wasn't for these videos to keep me busy, I would literally just be standing there like an idiot. I hate just standing there. I think that was my biggest, oh girl, it's all messy. <laughs> that was like my biggest nightmare when I decided to go back to retail, cause I had to, was just standing around. I hate 
just standing around. It's like I'm wasting my life or something. I'm like, girl, this is hell. But now that I have like a little project while I'm at work, it makes the day go so much faster. All right. I've been doing my makeup for 36 minutes already. Can you believe that? And it's not even a dramatic look. I talk too damn much. I think that's what it is. Girl. All right, let me get this hair. <sighs> Which I have so many hair products because I work for a bay. And it's funny because I work for a bay, but why do I keep going to this L'Oreal Ever Cream Sulfate Free Nourishing Leave In Spray? I don't know if they even make it anymore, but it's good. It smells really good too. All right, I'm just gonna blow dry my hair real quick. I got one of these brushes. Have you? Do any of you have a brush like this where it's supposed to like help blow dry your hair faster? It really does work. It kind of hurts my scalp though. So I have this one. Where's my favorite brush? Here it is. It's by Conair and it has like vents and it's a double type. It's like the synthetic and the other type, I guess plastic <laughs> bristles. It is so good. It does like everything. All right, my hair is so fine that it literally takes like two minutes to dry it. But see, as you can see, my hair is still frizzy as hell. I don't know why, look at that, see? It does calm down through the, throughout the day, but this is what I do. I try not to use it too much because it gives me split ends. These are on the lowest setting. I'm just gonna run it in towards the front of my hair. See how much shiny it looks? It looks so good that I hate that it damages my hair, but it, it looks so good. That's why I try not to do it throughout my entire head. All right. Let's let it cool off a little bit. Ooh, I'm sweating. So I do that and then I just flip it up and then just tousle it with my fingers because I don't want to brush out all that volume. All right, guys, this is the look for the day. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.